So as we get ready for marijuana to become legalized here in Canada, we've heard concerns from pediatrician and other healthcare professionals. Well, now veterinarians are warning us about the risks that marijuana can pose to our pets. Yeah, a Facebook user shared her story about her dog becoming ill on a camping trip. Her dog could barely stand, his whole body was shaking. At first she thought it might be a snake bite, but then her local vet told her it was marijuana poisoning. The dog survived, thank goodness, but in some cases, this can be fatal if it is not treated properly. All right, we've brought in Dr. Rebecca Greenstein uh, to take a look at some of the symptoms that we should look out for, but also what we can do about it and, and whether or not we're actually seeing an increase. So first of all, if your pet does ingest marijuana, how do you identify it? Well, usually it's within one to three hours of an ingestion or suspected ingestion, and they'll start to stagger. Uh, they can have dilated pupils. Uh, they are, uh, sometimes they'll vomit. In severe cases, they can even get seizures. But a hypersensitivity to touch and to light, that's something that's really common. And I was saying they're very similar to how yes. a person would react to marijuana, but you're saying there's a big difference in animals. There is a difference because they are more sensitive and they have more cannabinoid receptors. That's what's speculated. Uh, but oftentimes they'll, uh, they'll just be harder hit by everything. They can get a low temperature, uh, a low um, heart rate, and they can really be out of it for up to 96 hours. Wow. I can imagine just how scary that must be for all of these animals because they're obviously not doing this on purpose. They have no anticipation of these. No, symptoms. and most people don't relate the two of them because they think that, oh, it'll be mild, but it's actually not. It can be quite frightening. So what's the treatment for animals if they do get into your stash? It really depends what stage that they're in. If you know that it's happened and you can sort of get to it within an hour or so before they become symptomatic, then you can induce vomiting. But after the stage where they become very sedate and very sleepy, mm -hmm. it's no longer safe to induce vomiting, so the treatment is largely symptomatic and supportive. Kels and I are both dog owners. You're saying this happens more often in dogs than in cats? Absolutely, because a lot of them are, it's combined with edibles, and dogs are naturally more curious and likely to ingest them. And does it have to just be ingested in order for them to show symptoms? Not necessarily. Uh, they can, sometimes there are reports of intentional toxicosis where someone will actually blow smoke in their face or... For their uh, pet? Yeah, yeah. And because it's I think it's funny, right? And they it's do. not funny at all. They do. No, and I, I've, seen, I've seen at least one case like that. Humans use it for pain, which is why we're seeing a bit of an increase because it's in people's homes more often. Uh, could you use it to treat animal pain? This is an evolving question. So we know that there's a huge amount of uh, medical applications for medical marijuana, but the difficulty is it's still considered a controlled substance. So there are no products that have CBD, the uh, cannabidiol, the, the medical ingredient. There are no drugs approved by Health Canada currently. And so there's no legal pathway to prescribe for vets. This is obviously an evolving science. Yes. And throughout your career, you have seen the difference from when you first started versus today um, with not only the impact on animals, but also the number of animals that are affected by marijuana. That's actually been quantified. There's a study, uh, 2012, there was a landmark study that came out of Colorado that showed that there's a statistically significant relationship between the number of toxicosis that they saw at the vet hospitals and the number of medical marijuana licenses that have been issued. And the, the impact is also changing as well. Uh, you were mentioning that it has to do, you assume, with the, the intensity of the marijuana itself. Exactly. So it was never considered, marijuana when I first started was not considered a fatal toxicity. It, we would always tell owners that. But in that same study, there were two dogs who actually had a fatal ingestion. Hmm. And it's because they ingested the concentrated THC butter. Oh, Rebecca, thank you so much for coming in. It's thank something that I think none of us had ever considered when we were talking legalization in Canada. So we appreciate your insight. Thank you.